So not all first order differential equations are separable and can just be solved by separating the variables and then integrating both sides. Uh, the first type of differential equation we're going to talk about in this course that is not that case is what we call a linear equation, first order linear differential equation. Okay, and we've listed sort of the general form that we want to put those in. So we have dy dx plus some function of x times y equals some other function of x. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. It sort of looks similar to what you might think of as a linear equation from algebra, but we have some derivatives and other functions in there, so it's a little bit different. Uh, and two things we want to remember um, is that f and g, those functions in this form, can only depend on x, can only depend on x, or, you know, if, you're, if your independent variable is not x, if it's dy dt, then it, they're only allowed to depend on t, but they're not allowed to depend on the dependent variable y here. Okay, and the second thing is certainly that f and g are allowed to be constant functions. Okay, so it may be that you have, you know, instead of some function of x times y, maybe it's only a constant times y. Maybe it's 3 times y. And on the right-hand side, you don't have a function with x in it. Maybe you have 0 or you have, you know, negative pi or something like that. So the idea is f and g can depend at most on x, but they could also be constants as well. So if you see anything that can be put into this form, then we will probably be treating it as a linear equation. Here are some examples of linear equations, basically, that I've written down. And so in our first one, dy dx plus 5y equals 0. This is certainly just in the form that we wanted. And for this one, our function f is actually, it's constant, right? Our function is actually 5 here. And for g in this equation, our function is actually the constant function 0. So that is linear with those functions. If we look at the one next to it, so this one over here, we have, we can put this actually in the linear form, so we can go ahead and write dy dx minus 3xy equal to 8, and now it's definitely in the form of a linear equation, and here we can say that f is equal to negative 3x, and g in this case is still a constant function equal to 8 there for that one. All right, moving down to the bottom here, dy dt minus cosine ty equals e to the t. So here we're dealing with independent variable t, still dependent variable y. It's already set up in linear form. So here our f is actually equal to negative cosine of t for this one, and our g function is equal to e of t. And again, those depend at most on t, not on y, so we're good there, that's linear. And for the one in the bottom right-hand corner, the dx dt here, what we want to make sure is that we're just noticing that the second term, we can really think of it as dx dt minus 1 over t times x equals t sine of t. And as long as we see it that way, then we can certainly say, well, then f is equal to negative 1 over t, and here g is equal to t sine of t. One thing I want to make sure to point out is that sometimes we'll see a linear equation, and it definitely also maybe fits a different category. Uh, so just looking at, since we've already only really done separable equations, um, if f and g are functions that are both just constants, then the linear equation is definitely going to be separable. And so I've just written down one here. Uh, for example, so here f is equal to 2, g is equal to 6, both constants. So this is certainly separable. And the way we would separate this is just simply to go ahead and take the second term here and subtract it from both sides and get 6 minus 2y on the right-hand side. You can do many different things with the constants here. Maybe I will go ahead and just uh, factor out, let's say, a 2, just to make it a little nicer. So pull out a 2, and that would become 3 minus y. And then doing some rearranging, then that would take us to dy over 3 minus y equals 2 dx. And then certainly we could go from there, right? We could integrate on the left side dy, and that would give us negative ln absolute value 3 minus y 
equals integrate on the right hand side and we'd get 2x plus c and we could keep, we could keep going from there. But so that's the idea. If f and g are both constants, you could also do it as a, as a separable equation, which may be preferable. So I've just got one more example here. f is equal to negative 3 in this case. g is equal to 5. So they're both constants. This is certainly separable. They don't have to be constants for it to be separable. But if they are constants, then it's going to work out that we can do it as a separable equation. So we'll go ahead and solve this one all the way maybe. So we'll say dy dx is equal to 5 plus 3y. So we'll always, if we can separate it, we'll move that term over. And then here I would go ahead and maybe factor out the, uh, the 3. That might make it easier. So we'll go ahead and say dy dx is equal to 3 times 5 thirds plus y. And then if we want to go ahead and uh, separate this, we'll multiply both sides by dx and divide both sides by the parentheses there. So we'll get dy over 5 thirds plus y equals 3 dx. And then we would just integrate both sides. And that will give us a nice log rule there on the left-hand side. So we'll get ln absolute value of, I'll write it this way, y plus 5 thirds, how about, is equal to 3x plus our constant of integration. And then this is not too bad actually to solve. We take the exponential of both sides, we get y plus 5 thirds equals e to the 3x plus c. Um, and we can do a lot of different things with the exponential if we want to separate it or not, but basically y is equal to e to the 3x plus c minus 5 thirds. And we've solved our linear equation as a separable equation there. The big idea we want to take away from linear equations and sort of the new method rather than just turning them into a bunch of examples of the old method uh, is whenever we can't just simply separate it uh, what we will do is generally use what's called an integrating factor. And what we will do is we will find an integrating factor that's based on your f of x equation. Uh, we'll multiply the entire equation through by that integrating factor. And what that, that'll actually do is take the left-hand side and turn it into a product rule for the derivative of something. And that will allow us then to integrate nicely uh, sort of our messy looking left hand side of the equation. Okay, so we want to remember that f of x is always in front of our uh, basically linear term of the dependent variable here, it's y. Okay, and our integrating factor will be e to the power integral fx dx. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and leave off our constant of integration when we're finding the integrating factor, so we won't write plus c when we do these. Um, and, and that'll just save us some time in convention with adding c's and subtracting c's from both sides and combining them. So let's look at an example of what we, what we might see and how we might do this. This is a good first example of when we have f and g not constants. So we want to use the integrating factor to solve this. So we'll make a note here that f is equal to 1 over x in this example, and here that g is equal to sine x. And our y prime, remember that's our dy dx, so we have y prime plus 1x, 1 over x, y equals sine x. And remember the integrating factor, how we're going to do that to turn the left side into a product rule, that's going to be e to the integral of f of x dx. And so that's going to give us then e to the integral of 1 over x dx, which is going to equal e to the ln of absolute value x, which is going to give us then absolute value of x, which actually gives us either plus or minus x. Now it turns out it's not going to make a difference which one we choose in this example. When we multiply both sides by that, we'll still end up with the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the positive x here. So our integrating factor is x. We'll make a note of that. So our integrating factor is equal to x in this example. So we just multiply the entire equation by x, everything by x. So if we want to think of this, so we get xy prime plus x times 1 over x times y equals x times sine of x. Okay, and so looking at this then, 
we really could simplify the left-hand side, x, y prime, plus this becomes 1, y equals x sine x. And then what we're going to do is we will simply look at both sides as the derivative of something and say, well, these derivatives can vary from each other by at most a constant. Remember the idea with the integrating factor was that this would become the product rule of something. And if we look at this, we might be able to tell, well, this is actually the derivative of x times y. If we took the derivative of x times y, we would get x times the derivative of y plus the derivative of x, which is 1, times y. So what we've actually done is anti-differentiate the left side. Uh, and we need to then anti-differentiate the right-hand side. So when we go to integrate x sine x, we would need to do this then by parts. If we do this by parts, we would let u equal to x, and then dv would be our sine x dx, and then du is going to equal dx, and v would then equal negative cosine x we would integrate by parts there. So what we would get is uv, so negative x cosine x, minus the integral of v du, so minus a negative would become plus the integral of cosine x dx. And so the last thing we need to do here is integrate our cosine x dx. So we will keep our x times y, and here we will get equal to negative x cosine x plus sine x plus the constant of integration, and then dividing both sides by x to solve for y, we will get y is equal to negative cosine of x plus 1 over x sine x plus c over x. And I want to point out one little shortcut that may help you in the future to determine what your uh, left-hand side of your equation is. If you think about in this example, our integrating factor turned out to be x. And then we went ahead and said, well, when we figure out what the left-hand side product rule was, it was actually the product of the derivative of x times y. If you think about what's going on, when you multiply through by that integrating factor, the first thing you're always going to get on the left-hand side will be the integrating factor times dy dx plus, and then you're going to get the second half of your product rule. So if you think about this being the product rule, and this is the first half of the product rule, then that tells us that this is going to be the derivative of the integrating factor times y. And that's basically what your left-hand side is going to boil down to each time you do this. So once you get the correct integrating factor, you multiply through. If you're having a hard time seeing actually what does the left-hand side amount to as a product rule, uh, some derivative of something, it's going to be whatever your integrating factor was times y. All right, and just to summarize when we're solving a linear equation by using an integrating factor. So first, if it's linear, we find the integrating factor equal to e to the integral of f of x dx. Once we find that integrating factor, we multiply the entire equation, every term, by the integrating factor. And then the left-hand side becomes the derivative of integrating factor times y. When we anti-differentiate both sides, the left-hand side will just become integrating factor times y. The right-hand side you'll have to use whichever integration technique is appropriate. Now the only hang-up with this is we have to be able to obviously integrate the right-hand side. If we get an expression that we can't integrate by hand, then we may not need to use this method. So we hope that we can integrate the right-hand side. Uh, and if so, then we're good to go. We anti-differentiate both sides and simplify if possible. So I recommend check out some of the example problems where we solve uh, equations using an integrating factor. Uh, there should be a few of those on the website after this.